Hola, Shalonitos. Bienvenidos a Mexico. I'm in Mexico, and you know, I was going to take this time off, and I mostly have in terms of videos, but I just couldn't leave you guys completely high and dry. Like, there's some things we need to cover, namely Justin Bieber. I mean, what else could make me crawl out of my vacation? like stupor than our boy Justin. Because Justin has been on the scene lately promoting his new album Justice and he's been doing a lot of interviews and he recently did the cover story with GQ and talked a lot about how he went from like chaotic Bart Simpson-y fuck boy to like husband of the year, like king of the Jesus. Like how did he do that? And most importantly, did Haley actually do it for him? How? Did Haley Baldwin go from like a girlfriend who was completely jilted and tossed aside, they had a horrible breakup a few years ago, to his wife? Have we not all been in the throes of a fuckboy nightmare and been like, how do I get this guy to settle down? How do I get him to love me? How do I turn a hoe into a housewife? Well. I know how, and I'm going to tell you. So we're gonna break down some stuff that Justin said, and I'm gonna identify the one, two, three, four, five steps that Haley took, consciously or unconsciously, who knows, but we can identify these as steps and we can use them in our own life to get Justin to be the man she not only wanted him to be, but the man that on some level she knew that he could be, right? Because when we're tangled up with a fuck boy, we're like, you can be better, you can be good. Maybe it's like you could be as good as we once were. But we can't date potential and we can't date nostalgia. We have to date exactly what's right in front of us. But that doesn't mean we can't shape the outcome a little. I'm gonna get into it, but before I do, just wanna remind you guys to follow me on Instagram and head on over to Flays for some penisy videos. We're talking size, circumcision, sex tips, kink, all that stuff, BJ tips. And I'm doing a little story time on my decision whether to have kids or not, so head on over there. So like I said, Justin has been going on like a big PR tour and he recently did this GQ cover story. And he talked very openly and very honestly about the guy he used to be, a 15 year old, 18 year old, just with so much fame and so much power and so much money and yet so much emptiness and so much brokenness and so many drugs, <laughs> like a lot of drugs. Also, I didn't know he was like so close with Chance the Rapper. Weird, anyway, whatever. And then he talks about how he became like this very godly, I mean, he never shuts up about Jesus, right? And he talks very much with a lot of clarity about the journey. But before we get into his journey, we gotta talk about what happened with him and Haley, right? So back in 2016, they dated, and it's pretty easy to guess that she, like he was her first love, probably a first of a lot of things. They were away in the islands together for New Year's Eve, and. It was, it was pretty serious. And then, this is the story that I told you guys that was not out there, but it is, as far as my sources say, and the sources we had at Star Magazine, very true that she was about to get on a flight to Hawaii to go meet him. And he's like, don't fucking come, I don't wanna see you. And she's like, what? I'm, I'm, at, I'm at the airport. He's like, did I fucking stutter? I said, don't get on the plane, I don't wanna see you. Click. And she was devastated. And. It was on that trip that he was like, I think prowling around the jungle with his wiener out, it's big. And like had all these Instagram hoes and everything like on a helicopter and a Haley, can you imagine, can you imagine watching that? Can you imagine watching that and being her and being like, what happened? And she was like devastated, devastated. I mean, of course she was young, she was in love. Honey, it doesn't matter how old you are. Someone does something that to you, you might as well be 14 again. It's absolutely a nightmare. And so Justin kind of lived he was her hurt locker. He lived in this like mythical state of like constant open wound. And so when he came back into her life, of course she was going to give him another chance. Have we not all sat around and fantasized that like that guy who hurt us more than anyone else comes back? It's like, not only was I wrong, not only do I love you, I wanna marry you or some equally grand gesture. Of of course, of course we do. So it stands to reason that she would not only give Justin a chance, but plug in super hard and be like, I am not letting go of this. Maybe she's chasing the myth, but it does look like Justin's change. And I know, like I've talked a lot about Justin Haley. We have a whole playlist on them. I love them, I ship them, I think they're so cute. I just, I love their love. And I love the album that he wrote for her and all the songs he's written for her. I just, I love them, I think that they're adorable, I love it. And yes, and yes, they're completely codependent and they have a bizarre parent-child relationship, we'll get into that in a minute. But in their insular Hollywood world, that bubble that they're in, kinda works. I mean, it kinda works, right? 
At least I hope it. I don't know. I love them. I just, I ship. I'm unhealthy and I ship. So how did it go from don't get on the fucking plane to come to City Hall, I want to marry you? How did that happen? Well, Haley, Haley did a few things, but Justin also did a few things. So we're going to talk about all these. The number one thing Haley did, she stepped back. Point number one, she recognized he was broken. Whether she recognized this by choice or by force, because she had no other choice but to read the writing on the wall, who knows, it doesn't matter. She did get that memo. She looked at him and was like, this is either not someone I deserve, not someone who's capable of a relationship. This is a chaos I do not need. And so, number two, she stepped back. After that Hawaii fiasco, they did not speak. She cut him off. I mean, again, like, whether she can cut him off, he cut her off, it doesn't, I mean, it, it does matter, but the fact remains, she iced him out. I've heard this a million times from a million different sources. Like, she was like, nope, we're, we are all done. We are all done. Why am I saying that's the most important step? Because, girl, he can't miss you if he hasn't lost you, right? So much of the time, it's like, why doesn't he want me back? Have you left? No. You're still calling him, texting him, sucking his dick, doing all this stuff, coming over, making his food, doing his laundry. Why would he need a grand gesture to get you back? You're still here. And it's hard and it's hard and it's hard. It's hard. It's the worst thing in the world to pull away. That's why it's called tough love, right? We see this with parents dealing with oxy addicted children, all sorts of things where it's tough love. You have to cut them off. You have to say, I'm sorry, you're on your own here. Whether you end up in jail or prison, they're the same. The hospital, like whatever. I cannot be part of this. And I believe it's called tough love because it's tough on us. It's like sort of tough on them. But if you talk to any addict, and that's an extreme example, but fuckboys are sort of like addicts. I mean, they're, they're addicted to the attention, right? If you talk to any addict, almost all of them say the turning point is when everybody cut them off. I knew I couldn't call my mom anymore. I knew my dad wasn't gonna bail me out. I knew my sister wasn't gonna let me crash on her couch after a bender. I was on the streets for a few days and I was like, oh shit, what am I doing? We have to be that tough love for these fuck boys in our life. Now, Shallon, Shallon, you know, Shallon, what are you saying? What are you saying? We gotta put in all this work? No, baby girl, you don't. I am not saying that these are the steps you should take. I am of the mindset, and you guys know this if you come to this channel before. If a guy's gonna give you problems, bye. It's like chasing down a subway. Oh my God, I missed it. Let me get on the tracks. One of them's electrified. Let me run as fast as I fucking can down this rat infested tunnel full of feces, blah, blah, blah. Or you could stand on the platform, be huffy and annoyed, listen to your podcast, girl on top, check it out, and wait for the next subway. Cause there's always more subways. Sooner or later, another one comes along. Just like men. I'm not saying that this is what you should do, but it, sometimes you, you're just not done till you're done and you really do want to give it a try. It's like, no, I love him and I, wanted, I want this to work. Okay, give it a go. But my philosophy overall, if it's not a hell yes, then it's got to be a hell no. You're not all in. You're not so gang for me. Okay, then bye. You don't get to tap dance in and out of my life. But Haley said that too. You don't get to be half in, half out. I'm sorry, I want you to come to Hawaii. I'm not answering the phone, goodbye. I'm not, you can be a clown. I'm not buying tickets at the circus anymore. So she did those two steps. And what did that do to Justin? That put him at a rock bottom. Now it was a confluence of things for sure, but a woman that he loved walking away from him made an impact. And this is what he had to say. This is what he had to say. So began a process in which Justin Bieber tried to find out what was wrong with him and how to fix it. He didn't try to medicate himself, Ryan Good, his like swag coach well, said. He didn't try to fast forward through that season of life. He just went through it. And he was really spending a lot of time asking, how do I get better? Justin has done more work on himself than most people you've ever known. Most people who are like, I'm working on myself, they're not really working on themselves because they've never gotten to the point where you fucking have to work on yourself to get through it. Justin has gotten to the point where he's had had to work on himself just to get through it. That is interesting. The rock bottom looks different for everyone, right? But for fuckboys, usually it's, I lost that good girl. One of my, I, Max, you know Max. One of his guy friends who, oh, he's gorgeous. <sighs> Missed opportunity, <laughs> but I was a good girl. Like, 
is such a player. Like, his friend is such a player, like, fucks every girl in D.C., whatever, whatever, and had, like, a good girl who really liked him, was, like, awesome. All of his friends were like, dude, like, hold on to this one. And he didn't. He fucked it up, was mean to her, pushed her away. And, like, a few months later, now he's like, I really miss her. I just, I don't know why I did that. Why do guys do that? Why do they do that? Why do they do that? I had this conversation with my exes the other day. I'm like, it's like there's something driving you to be as mean as possible to me. And he's like, I know. And it's not just you. It's all girls. Like, I want something good and I ruin it. And I'm like, so stop fucking ruining it. But like, I have like pushed that person out of my life. I'm like, I can't watch this and I can't be party to this and I will not abide this. So get your shit together or don't, but I'm not going to wait. And that's crucial. Haley didn't wait. She dated Sean Mendez. She was out and about. She wasn't shy about things. She's like, I'm living my life. Oh, I'm, you're messed up. You miss me. I, I bet you do. <laughs> I bet you do. Whenever a guy says he misses me, I'm like, I agree. I, I'm sure that you miss me. Who wouldn't? Look at me. Listen to me. Be around me. I'm a delight. Maybe not on the internet, but I am in real life. So then at this point, Haley began to do something, intentional or not, that was genius, genius. Perhaps she was watching my videos. She identified Justin's shadow self. She identified the gaping void in his life and she pressed. Pressed means different things. Sometimes pressing is a very up in your face kind of behavior. For Haley, it wasn't. Step three was identifying the shadow self. Step four, was it step four? Yes is she became an example of this. What am I talking about? I sound kind of like esoteric. What am I talking about? Justin's shadow self is a stable, loving husband and father. Isn't that weird? I mean, it's not because I think a lot of people want that, but because, I mean, most like random dudes, like their shadow self is you're a star, you're special, you're so amazing. No one in the world's like you, everyone loves you. That wasn't Justin's shadow self, that was his present self, that was his light self, right? That's what everyone was telling him all the time. That didn't need to be validated. It was the things on the inside that needed to be validated. I've dated a lot of famous guys and part of the reason I did that, and this was not like in a purposeful manipulative way, but because I never talked to them about work. I never talk to them about hockey or the Grammys or politics or whatever. I talk to them about their shadow selves. You are so close with your sister. I love to see your guys' relationship. Because I did. That was cool to me. Oh my God, you made that coffee table? That's amazing you can do that. And then you can go write like a number one song. Because it was amazing to me. But I honed in on things that other people ignored. Other people didn't seem to value. And things that they were like, but this is who I am. This is what I love. This is a part of me. We all want to be seen, and not just seen for the number one thing that we do. We want to be 360 seen, right? And so if we, can, if we can identify what a man wants to be seen as and press, not in a mean way, not in a manipulative way. You see people who do it in a mean, manipulative way. Meghan Markle! <laughs> we've done, I mean, we've done a million videos on Meghan and how she ensnared Harry with his shadow self. But this is a way to do it in a more benevolent kind of way. When we can tell someone, I see you, I know what you want, but look, the crucial misstep we make is that we will often literally say that to a guy, literally say that. When I was in college, I've told this story before, I took a storytelling class, it was so fascinating, but we learned a lot about fairy tales. And one thing my teacher said that always stood out, children latch onto certain fairy tales for very specific reasons, like it resonates something deep inside them. For me, it was Sleeping Beauty. My mom traveled a lot for work and I was like watched after by my grandmother and my great grandmother. And in the Disney Sleeping Beauty, that was Aurora, that was Briar Rose. And she just like wants to like veer away and get out and experience life. And that's how I felt. So I would watch it over and over and over again. I was like five. And like, you don't know why it resonates, but it does, right? But the teacher said, if you, can, if you realize why a child resonates with this, never bring it up to them, never. It will be very damaging, very embarrassing. And it will like, it will make them feel very exposed. I mean, it, it could damage them. And this always stuck with me because the same is true of a shadow self. If you go to a guy, it's like, hey, do you know what your shadow self is? You want to be seen as like super worthy and capable and confident and you don't feel like you are. Men are proud creatures. They are ego driven. They don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that their shortcomings, as they probably define their shadow self, is very apparent to everyone around. That is a nightmare. I mean, 
Who does want to hear that? If your friend came to you, it's like, you know what? I know that your greatest compliment is that you look thin because you don't feel thin, you feel fat. Be like, fuck, is that, can everybody tell that I'm so self-conscious about my weight? Could everyone see that? It's, it's damaging. And so then the compliments you get are not compliments at all. It feels more like a needle in your, in your soft emotional underbelly. So be very careful not to do this in such an obvious way. So how do you do it? You do what Haley did. You set an example. You lead by example. She positioned herself, and again, I'm not saying that this was fake, like she is genuinely this person, but she positioned herself, she started to be very public about her Christianity, about her dorkiness, about her ballet history, how she was homeschooled. That started coming up a lot more in interviews, right? She wanted to position herself <laughs> as a very stable, loving force. Why does she think that's what Justin needed? In this GQ article, he said several times, he had chaotic, unreliable parents. What he fantasized about, what always was so appealing to him is like a family that has dinner together. These simple things that are simply too complicated for his life as an international pop star, as the most famous person on planet Earth, right? He just wanted to hang out with his friends, do normal things, have normal conversations, have, go to church on Sundays, right? He wanted, he hungered for that stable family. And Haley positioned herself as exactly the person who could give it to him. She didn't say this to him. Hey, I know you really hunger for a stable family. I'll be done in five. She didn't say it. She didn't say it in videos. She just lived the example. Why is this so important? I'll tell you why. Because cheerleaders don't play. Hey, Deshaun, throw Brittany the ball. Yeah, Brittany, with the pom-poms, the spear fingers, throw the ball, she's gonna run in the end zone. You ever heard that in a football game? I have it. no. Brittany and Caitlin are on the sideline, cheering, go, yay, do it, yay. Don't pass me the ball. Odell, do not pass, do not pass me the ball, right? They have their role on the field, they have their role on the sidelines cheering, and they never mix. And you know what else? We as women, empathetic women, problem solvers, achievers, acquirers, we want to diagnose these dudes, right? And we want to go to them with this like PowerPoint presentation of their trauma. And on slide 39, I can tell you exactly why your father fucked you up. Can we advance it? Yeah, thank you. Right? We want to do that. But we cannot. What we can do is work on ourselves to be the best example of how someone else should live. And not like, I mean how they should live in like the best possible healthiest way. They should be stable vaguely sober, right? High achieving, empathetic, kind, well-rounded, all of these things. When Brittany, the cheerleader, goes into the gym to get fit, she's not doing the same exercises that Odell and Deshaun are doing, right? She's trying to get her leg up over her head, kick really high, be flexible, do the backflip. Guarantee Odell and Deshaun are not doing those same exercises. They're doing power, speed, throwing, right? Everyone is doing their own thing to enrich themselves the best. Brittany is not trying to be the football player. She's not trying to do his job for him. She's, she's like, no, I have my own life over here. I have my own job, my own parameters, my own expectations. I am going to cheer you on, but from a distance. And in my way that works for me. Why is this so important? Because like I said, we are women who, inc who are inclined to plug in. We are inclined to step in and be like, let me do this work for you. Let me fix your relationship with your mom. Let me help you get that job in the corner office. Let me make you feel okay about dropping out of college. No, that's not what Haley did for Justin. She led by example. And when you lead, people follow. And when people follow, they move towards something good, you, the example, and away from whatever is bad. You are not chasing them down and yanking them. You're not an emotional kidnapper. You're not an emotional trafficker. You're an emotional leader. Follow me or don't, but this is the way I'm going. Be like me or not, but I'm pretty happy and my life is great. And I know what you're saying, but what if it doesn't, what if it doesn't work? Then baby girl, it doesn't work. You cannot force ripen an avocado, let alone a whole ass broken fuck boy. You can't. And what would you do if you had an avocado that was not ripe and, oh my God, people are coming over and we need guacamole. I just want guacamole right now. 
are you gonna like gah, 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 carve into it and like eat this green, hard, terrible, nauseating, unripe avocado? No. Just like you're not gonna chase that subway down the tube. You're gonna be like, this is not the avocado for me. There's billions of them out there, billions of subways. I'm mixing so many metaphors. Avocado subways, avocado subways, right? Whenever you're in a fuckboy, be like, the avocado subway. It's a, it's a subway that's shaped like an avocado rocketing down a tunnel. Is this helpful? You're gonna pivot. You're gonna find a different avocado. You're gonna eat something else. Or you're gonna be like, you know what, that sucks. I really want a guacamole, but I'm not gonna make myself sick to prove a point. Do not make yourself sick on a fuckboy. Do not go further down a bad road because then you know what? Who's the leader? Well, he is. He's the leader of bullshit and fuckery and misery, but you're the one following. Mm -mm 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 -mm. If you truly wanna change a fuckboy, if you truly wanna make a difference in this man's life and get him to activate his potential or get him back to where he used to be, identify that he's broken. Step two, pull back. Step three, identify what he is missing, what he needs as an example, who he needs to be. Step four, become that example. And step five, lead away. And if he follows, fantastic. And if he doesn't, what's the downside? You've enriched yourself, plugged into yourself, learned more about yourself, practice disconnection from toxic people, practice a lack of codependence, right? And you're moving, you've gotten better, he's gotten bitter. Because it's important we do not become codependent. Like I said, we are women who are inclined to plug in. That leads to a lot of codependency. We also cannot get into the therapist role. This is very difficult. This is very difficult. Because you know what? I've watched a lot of porn, a lot of Pornhub, a lot of Pornhub channels. Um, there's not one on therapists. You know why? Guys don't want to fuck their therapist. They don't want to fuck someone who reminds them of their trauma, who is a touchstone, who is a depository for all of the things that are wrong with them. If you make yourself that, he's going to be like, <sighs> Thank you so much for the help. But I met, I met this other girl. <laughs> Bye. He's gonna move away from this, this woman who reminds him of everything he was bad at and move on to a woman who's like a fresh start. She doesn't know he's a fuck boy. She doesn't know he was a broken asshole, drug addict, shotgunning white claws at 8 a.m. She doesn't know any of that. She's seen the finished product and you're on cleanup crew. Why? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Imagine if you would invest that energy into yourself. Imagine. Because look, nothing's gonna force ripen that avocado. If he's not ready, he's not ready. And it's not going to matter what you do. It's just not. So give it, give it a try. Give it a try on these steps. And again, the worst case scenario is you've made yourself better. You follow these steps, you've made yourself better. Best case scenario, hey, you've got your man back. You've got a guy who's activated a different level of himself and he's writing a fire album for you and it's called Justice. <laughs> I want to know your thoughts on Justin and Haley. Do you think that they're super cute? We know that they're codependent. We know. We know we have the parent-child dynamic. We know. Absolutely. It's very evident. But, you know, like I said, I ship. And we don't have to do everything as extreme as those people do. We can take an eyedropper full of that and use it to enrich ourselves and have a relationship that's actually even better than the one they have. I'll see you later, shalligators. Join me next time. Bye.